Hello and a warm welcome to Personal Finance. I am Kukule Tutele. Now with the increase in financial uncertainty and prediction of low economic growth in South Africa, clearly there's a lot of pressure on consumers who need to be encouraged to consider the impact of all these concerns, especially on their lifestyle and short-term financial decisions. All of these have an impact on their financial future well-being. Joining us now in Cape Town, though, to help us navigate this very blurry landscape is Liesl Budrum, who's the Head of Advice at Old Mutual Personal Finance. Liesl, so good to have you with us on the show tonight, and thanks for making time. When we talk about the financial health of South Africans, though, we all know that it's not in the state that it needs to be. But uh, give us a quick overview of some of the challenges that many South Africans are uh, dealing with at the moment, especially from a debt and savings perspective. Hi, Gugu. Yes, it's definitely not in a state that um, we would feel comfortable with, especially in terms of balancing the short-term financial needs with the long-term financial planning goals, the savings and the budgeting that people are currently not focusing on in terms of making sure there's a little bit of surplus at the end of the month to make provision for those long-term goals, the retirement savings, the holidays, the education plans, those necessities that they need to save for over the longer term. At this point, people are saving, uh, making ends meet at the end of the month instead of putting money away towards savings. So it's really a matter of compromising those long-term goals in favor of the immediate um, monthly expenses. Mm. We know immediate satisfaction is also a trend that we see here in South Africa, but where do we get it all wrong? Is it the fact that we are not uh, well financially educated? Is it the quick desire just to have um, um, immediate gratification needs are considered? But where are we getting it wrong and hopefully how can we fix it? I think it's a balance of immediate gratification and then the habits that get created as a result of that. We tend to spend money on luxuries without even realizing the implication on the long-term goals. There are obviously some people where budgeting is really a very fine line where there's a very careful balance that needs to be struck. But it's important that people like that sit down, think of the budget very carefully and think of what do you want to prioritize right now and how are you going to find that extra money for the long-term goal and then address those the discipline issues to make sure you you stick to the budget, where there are bad spending habits, where you are simply in a habit of not saving, understand those habits and make an effort to change those habits so that you can realize your long-term goals. Mm. I think you hit the nail on the head there in separating the goals, whether they're long-term or short-term. But I want us to pick up there and in particular, start off with the B word, which is budgeting. How does one establish um, their, 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 their budgeting needs, uh, especially if they're still writing it off, of the, off the cuff on the back of a serviette or perhaps some uh, scrap paper that they happen to come along with? Does the attitude there actually needs to change where there's more discipline in budgeting and structures around that? I believe the first step that one needs to take is understanding yourself. Some people are able to budget, draw up a budget, a very appropriate budget, and then apply the discipline to stick to that budget. If you know you're not one of those people, if you know you don't have the skills or you don't have the discipline, then it's best to enlist the help of somebody, be it a family member or a professional financial advisor, that can help you with a budget, an appropriate budget that, that's realistic, something that will help you still achieve your monthly goals, but also get that money to be able to put aside for the long-term goals. And then if you need somebody to help keep you accountable, make sure you deal with friends or family or a professional financial advisor that will keep you accountable to make sure that you keep on track with those financial goals. We see such destruction of value where people start with a great budget, they start with a great financial plan just to deviate from that plan in a few months time, incurring a whole lot of costs that are unnecessary and then obviously they don't achieve the long-term goals simply because they don't stick to the plan that they've put in place. Mm. You mentioned accountability and at top of mind one thinks of a, f a financial advisor or financial planner, uh, talk to us about ensuring that you get appropriate assistance uh, from someone who will not only be knowledgeable in this particular market, but uh, also keep you in check to ensure that you stay on the tightrope. Absolutely. I think people often think that a financial planner needs to be a, a super specialist in terms of all the technicalities around financial planning and finances and markets, and that is definitely important. But I think a big part of the value that one derives from dealing with a financial planner is simply for that person to interrogate the, the client properly, to understand me as a person, and to understand where could I be tempted, where could I abandon my retirement plan just in favor of that holiday that I can't really afford. So creating a relationship with a financial planner that will keep me accountable 
accountable. Somebody that I can ask if ever I'm tempted to buy that holiday or to surrender a policy, a saving for my education, for my child, for instance. Somebody that can guide me. How can I balance those needs? How can I afford the holiday but still keep my education plan on track, for example? So in that softer skill, that relationship and that trust and that guidance, there's great value in partnering with a financial planner as far as that's concerned. Mm. Lisa, you mentioned some of those long-term savings elements and sometimes it's so easy to decide that you want to tap into your education policy for your children or tap into your retirement savings funds. But in the long term, I understand that these can have dire consequences. Uh, walk us through just uh, how serious these concerns can be. Absolutely. I think people often think because it's long term, because you've got, you know, 10 or 15 years before that education plan needs to be realized when your child goes to university, or even longer, maybe 20, 25 years before you're going to be arriving at retirement, you think there's always time later to make up something if you take the cash out now. And it's very important to understand that the more time you have, the easier it is to make provision for that long term goal. The more you postpone that long term goal and making provision for it, the more difficult it becomes. That's why we see so many people today arrive at retirement and not having nearly enough capital to provide income during their retirement years. So if you think of dipping into your retirement plan or your, your education plan, it's so important that you speak to a financial advisor to understand exactly what the implications are of making that decision. Do you really want to dip into that plan right now for a luxury or for an immediate need that you can perhaps compromise? You know, don't take that very expensive holiday, maybe just go a little bit closer to home that's not so quite so expensive. On that particular front though, is it ever too late to try to catch up on lost savings, especially for those maybe who dip into uh, their uh, retirement savings? You know, I don't want to say it's too late, but the later you leave it, the more difficult it becomes. So the, the best place to start is right now, today. Start saving right now. It's going to make your life easier and easier the earlier you start. And if you have started, please don't touch those savings. Leave them in place unless it's absolutely necessary. And that brings me to another important point, is having an emergency fund in place. If we want to make sure that we can stick to the budget and we can leave our retirement and our education savings alone, a very important part of your financial plan is having an emergency fund in place because we know things go wrong, we know unexpected expenses come up. So it's always a great idea to have that emergency fund in place to be able to provide for that so that you don't have to compromise your budget and you don't have to dip into your long-term plans and compromise them. Mm. Lisa, what about the old age question? You mentioned adequate retirement savings, you mentioned having em enough in your emergency kit. How much is enough? <laughs> How does one determine that value? That's a very difficult question and I think unfortunately many people think you know it's just a, an amount, it's just a quick calculation and that depends on the detailed analysis of each person's situation. When do you want to retire? How much capital and income will you need to, to make sure you maintain your standard of living? I think that's the most important thing. We don't want you to have to compromise on your standard of living before retirement. You want to be able to continue with that standard of living after retirement. So it really needs to look at how much debt will you still have at retirement that you would need to pay off? What is your income need at retirement? Do you have dependents at retirement or do you have all the dependents would have left home perhaps at that time? So it's very difficult to give a one size fits all answer. It really depends on a detailed analysis of each, each, each individual. And then looking at how much time you've got left to make provision, you may need to compromise on some things. You may need to move into a smaller home, but as long as you know that and that's part of your plan, you can start preparing for that and managing your expectations. So it doesn't come as a big shock or disappointment at retirement when you realize you can't afford the home or you can't afford the car that you're currently driving, you would have to cut back or scale down. Mm. Lisa, something else that's quite critical is not only sticking to the plan, but ensuring that you remain uh, flexible enough to keep it updated. And because we all know life happens, people get married, people get divorced, uh, you have uh, a loss of life or you have children in future. Uh, how critical are some of these uh, life events in uh, staying on track with regard to your financial plan? That's very relevant. These life events are obviously crucial to your plan. Your plan changes every year. We know life events happen regularly. So it's very important if you've got a good financial planner, you've got a budget in place, you've got the discipline to stick to the budget, you've got the plan in place, it's crucial that you review that plan optimally once a year, perhaps at least once every two years to make sure, especially if there's a life event, the first person you should be calling is your financial planner to discuss how does this life event impact on your financial plan. If there's 
there's a divorce, if there's a birth or a death, what happens to all your other financial instruments, your will? How does it impact on your retirement plan? How old will your child be when you get to your planned retirement age? How does it impact your retirement savings? Can you afford to add an education plan? There are so many questions and each of the answers to these questions are absolutely individual and the answers need to be tailor-made to your specific situation. So it's so important to put your plan in place and then to regularly review that plan to make sure it keeps track with your changing circumstances over your lifetime. Mm -hmm. Lisa, we've certainly said quite a bit and uh, poignant issues that we need to focus on, but let's get a quick recap now of some of the key takeaways from tonight's discussion. Liesl, coming back to you, what are your uh, key words of advice to uh, individuals who uh, just caught the tail end of tonight's conversation? I think the importance of the budget, focusing on the budget and making sure you have a reasonable practical budget in place that you are able to stick to and balancing that with your long-term financial goals. Things like a retirement plan, saving for education, balancing the short-term with the long-term goals and then making provision for life's emergencies. If something had to happen that had to be an unexpected expense, making sure there's money set aside to be able to deal with that so that there's no need to compromise your monthly budget or compromise your long-term financial goals. Indeed. Thank you so, so much for your time today, Liesl, uh, certainly providing us with a fantastic insight into understanding the nature of financial planning. A big thank you once more to Liesl Budram, who's the Head of Advice at Old Mutual Personal Finance, for joining us this evening. Remember that you can also share some of your feedback with us and hopefully positive experience as well as lessons learned, hard financial lessons learned. You can share some of that feedback on social media by tweeting your comments to at CNBC Africa using the hashtag finance410 or to myself at Kukum Fupi. Until next time though, we wish you financial wealth and wellness.